Hello and welcome to another edition of Focus on Morris County. I'm Joe Garifo, Public Information Director for the Morris County Government. Focus on Morris County is a program that's designed to keep us up to date on the actions that are being taken by the Morris County Board of Freeholders. The show is also intended to make us all more aware of the many facets of Morris County government. Now, on this segment of the program, we are going to focus on the Morris County Freeholders Advisory Committee on Women. This is an advisory panel that the Freeholders created back in December 2003, and uh, the first members of the committee were appointed by the Freeholders in 2004. Now, here to uh, detail the committee and its work are my guests. First, to my left, is Michelle Roars. Michelle is the uh, Chief Professional Officer of the United Way of Northern New Jersey. And uh, seated next to Michelle is C.B. Signs Williams. Uh, she is the Pediatric Program Coordinator of the Family Health Center, which is at Morristown Medical Center. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Program. Thank you for having us here. Let me uh, start with you, Michelle. Just explain a little bit about the uh, committee itself, the Advisory Committee on Women, what its function or mission is. Sure. Uh, yes, as you said, the uh, Advisory Committee on Women was established back in uh, the beginning of 2004. It uh, was when the uh, committee first met. And it was really um, designed to assist the freeholders in doing some data gathering about um, women's issues in the community. Um, and the committee is really established to help make recommendations and, and keep the freeholders apprised of what's going on in, in the community, um, again, related to women's issues of, of note. Yeah. How many members does the committee have and how are they uh, selected? Sure. Uh, there are 11 members um, and they are f appointed by the freeholders. So um, people that are interested in, in being on the committee would submit an application to the freeholders and then um, they are selected and appointed um, by the, the, the current sitting freeholders. Yeah. Now, when did you join the committee and uh, why did you join the committee? Sure. I was uh, appointed um, in the beginning of 2010, so I'm entering my third year on the committee. And um, I've, I've long standing have a, a passion for women's isu issues and have worked in the community uh, with many organizations that have focused specifically on, on assisting women. And so that's kind of where my, uh, my interest lies. CB, uh, I'm going to ask you the same question. How long have you been a committee member and um, how did you become involved in the advisory committee? I actually was invited to one of the first symposiums that they presented. It was called uh, No Women Left Behind and it was a symposium intended to gather what the needs for the community were. So a lot of community members, service providers were invited for us to be able to provide information as to what the needs of the clientele that we serve. Um, and. Um, I met at the time a committee member and we started chatting and again I'm exactly like Michelle, my passion is helping uh, families, children, women specifically and especially uh, the underserved. Um, so when I met her, um, you know, we kind of like got a connection and she actually invited me to apply. Um, it was, it, it was uh, intimidating, uh, you know, because I'm like, oh, it's, you know, application and you have to be appointed. Um, and I was appointed in 2000, at, at the end of 2010, so right, I came right after Michelle. And uh, it's just been an excellent experience. It's, it's, you give out, but the, the return is also very rewarding. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, talk about the committee itself and maybe some of the accomplishments or uh, achievements of the committee over the years. Sure. As uh, CB mentioned, um, back at the beginning of the uh, the committee, uh, they started with a, a forum called No Women Left Behind. And that was a forum that was um, designed to really bring together various women, diverse women in the community to talk about issues that, that we're facing. And um, over the past several years, we've actually, um, you know, kind of grown this forum, and we've basically created um, annual uh, forums where we bring together uh, women in the community uh, to talk about various issues. And so, um, you know, over the past couple of years, we've um, certainly, you know, continued this, and we started um, with another forum that we called Bringing Alice um, Out of Wonderland. And this was um, a, a forum that was kind of based on some information that um, came out of a research project that United Way had done on what uh, we defined as ALICE, which stands for Asset Limited, Income Constrained, and Employed People in Our Community. And the Women's Advisory Committee uh, took a look at this report and looked at the fact that a lot of women um, are, in fact, uh, financially um, constrained, um, even though they're working, um, you know, many jobs. Um, and so uh, the committee really took this issue to light and tried to understand some of the root causes of what was you know contributing to the issues and through that dialogue and bringing people together hopefully networking so that
that women can find the resources and hopefully um, find themselves in better financially uh, stable situations. CB, there was a, um, another conference that the Women's Advisory mm -hmm. Committee uh, sponsored. I believe this was called Redefining Cinderella. Cinderella. <laughs> what can you tell us about? And this was a this was a conference, I believe, that was in 2011. Correct. It was done, yeah, last yeah. year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what can you tell us about? Well, this when we we talked about the findings that we had from bringing a valley slide. Um, out of, out of Wonderland, and um, you know, like the feedback also that we get that we got from the attendees, we started also thinking about the fact that yes, you know, this is an issue that it has to be addressed through uh, employees and the pay and all that. But, but then we started thinking about what, why are women that are more educated, why, how are we perpetuating uh, the this discrepancy, this disparity, um, and then we started exploring a little bit more about how. Um, we tend to create our own blocks at times. So we are, we're enabling these blocks to, to sustain. Um, so what we did is we follow along with the uh, theme of Alice in Wonderland, um, and then we started thinking about the Cinderella myth, about that, um, that idea that you know, a Prince Charming will come and it will make your life better. Um, and the symposium was meant for, for actually bring the conversation up, because sometimes it is very unconscious and that we just sort of like get socialized that way. But if we bring it up, we will be able to sort of like be, pre you know, have it in the present and be able to sort of like change, change patterns that we all create for ourselves. I mean, not only other people, because I think that what happens is we tend to put it on others. Mm -hmm. um, so then that we're trying to give control to the women and get empower them to say, what are we doing to be able to change ourselves to change, make the change for us, for others? Are you planning a similar event uh, this year? Yes, actually, with the feedback that we got from that symposium, um, we did it uh, only with women, with adults. Um, and the feedback was uh, high on the fact that you need to do this for girls. You know, instead of like true prevention, not just try to fix it now that we're adults, but to actually start it young. Mm -hmm. um, so this year we talked about maybe doing a uh, mother-daughter symposium. Um, we usually do it on, in the morning for, with women to come, but uh, this time around we're going to change things a bit. We're going to try to do it uh, after school so teenagers can come with their mothers. Uh, we're going to try to do a mother-daughter keynote, um, and we're going to have pizza and kids stuff just to get the, you know, and it would be great also to be able to have the girls start verbalizing because they're feeling it, they're thinking it, but they don't, they don't have the forum to be able to say this is how we feel and how we see things. And for the mothers to be able to hear that and for their daughters hear their mothers mm -hmm. having these thoughts as well. So that connection, and that's what we're going to be trying to do this year. Is this something maybe that's planned for the fall or early winter? It's going to be done in the fall. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, let me ask you, you, you talked about girls, and I know that the uh, Women's Advisory Committee uh, has partnered over the past several years with the Girl Scouts mm -hmm. of yes. Northern New Jersey. What are some of the things that uh, the committee and the Girl Scouts have, have done together? Well, we, what we try to do is we try to connect the Girl Scouts to the community. So we try to facilitate, um, you know, like gatherings in which the girls can actually contribute to the community. Mm -hmm. um, so what we have done is we have uh, done a school drive uh, in which the girls have collected, um, you know, school supplies, books, you know, uh, folders and stuff like that, and and be able to donate it to, um, you know, an organization that we be able to use them. And I believe um, in um, was it 2011, perhaps it was the Interfaith Food Pantry that you worked with. Correct. Uh, we actually had the girls do the donation uh, drive, and uh, they actually uh, gave it both to the Interfaith Food Pantry as well as the Lake Street School, which is a school for hearing impaired children. And um, I think it's a really wonderful opportunity to bring together, you know, women that are serving in leadership capacities and, and instilling the values um, in the young girls about their own leadership development and, and civic engagement opportunities. Yeah. Um, are, are there any other projects besides the collection projects for the? Um, uh, for the girls to get involved in? Well, we're exploring new things that we can do. I mean, what, what, what the committee does is tries to find the need. Um, and sometimes, you know, school drives and, and things like that that have been done by other organizations, mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to find that gap. What, what is it that we, you know, that hasn't been tapped on or be able to give the resources to? And uh, by 
contacting the organization that is in need and hooking them up with the Girl Scouts, we actually create uh, you know, a, a very good collaboration. And collaborations is really a strong point, I think, of the Women's Advisory Committee is that we, you know, certainly look for other organizations in the community and not just here mm -hmm. in Morris County, but certainly across the state and the country as well. We've been partnering with the Division on Women for some of the information that we've been uh, providing through the forums as well as the um, Association of uh, American Universities for Women, um, that they've been a, a, a strong partner with us to give us information. And, and, and the collaboration is essential too because we're self-funded. The committee is self-funded, so we do count on the community involvement to be able to provide the services, to provide the symposium. I mean, th we don't actually provide services, but we do try to bring the community together to bring awareness, to start a conversation, um, and a local conversation, not just mm -hmm. topics that affect outside, but you know what is happening right here, and how do you see it, how do you feel about it, how do you perceive it, so then maybe changes can start happening from then. Now, what is your relationship, Michelle, with, with the Morris County government? I mentioned at the beginning that mm -hmm. it's the Freeholders Advisory Committee mm -hmm. uh, on Women. What is the committee's relationship with the county government? Are you, uh, is there a department to which uh, is a liaison to the uh, committee? Well, this is a, um, a, a committee that's appointed, as I said, by the freeholders. Right. Um, however, we do serve under the auspices of the Department of Human Services, and so we have a direct report through the Department of Human Services. Um, and we have frequent exchanges with the freeholders themselves, and again, to keep the conversation open so that we can certainly address and be aware of what issues are facing um, our community members. The future of the uh, committee and maybe some of the uh, issues that you'll be addressing? Uh, we actually hope to do um, a survey um, at, the, um, at the, the festival on the green and try to get some more in input from community members and, and take that um, as, our, as our charge for, for the, the future um, of our agenda. I think it's essential for us to be able to be um, current. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, through the years, I mean, the first fact-finding was done in 2004. Um, you know, with the economy changing and constantly, you know, jobs and stuff like that, that, that we uh, get the feedback, the present feedback for what's going on in the community right now. Well, ladies, I want to thank you very much for being with us today, Michelle and CB. And uh, I just want to give our viewers some information if you wanted to find out a bit more about the work of the Freeholders Advisory Committee on Women, you should really reach out to the Morris County Department of Human Services at 973-285-6800. Six, three. The uh, Human Services Department website is morrishumanservices.org. Now, if you have a question about Morris County government that you would like to have answered, you can call the Morris County Freeholders Office. And that telephone number is 973-285-6010. You may also visit the county government's website at morriscountynj.gov. And once you're there, please sign up for the county's electronic newsletter, Morris Connections. Uh, why don't you also become a Facebook fan? You can follow us on Twitter. You can view our past programs and other videos on YouTube. And you can uh, embrace all of the other social media that the county government offers. I'm Joe Garifo. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm John Pecoraro, surrogate of Morris County. If a loved one passes away and you need to transfer property to their heirs, you must come to the surrogate's court. This is true even if the deceased did not have a will. This process is known as probate. Now probate in New Jersey is not overly complicated and my staff is available to assist you. If you have any questions, please call my office at 973-285-6500 or visit our website at morrissurrogate.com. Welcome back to Focus on Morris County. I'm Joe Garifo, and on this segment of the program, we are going to learn about the Morris County Community Development Program, and in particular, some of the projects that received funding here in 2012. And here to explain the program and to detail some of those projects are my guests. First to my left is Sabina Von Alec. Sabina is the director of the Community Development Division, which is in the county's Department of Planning and Development. And uh, seated next to uh, Sabina is Wayne Cresta. Wayne is the chairman of the Community Development Revenue Sharing Advisory Committee. Folks, welcome to the Thank program. You. Thank you. Uh, Sabina, let me start with you. Now, I know the Community Development Program administers several programs. Can you just explain what those programs are? The three programs we administer are federally funded. They are the Community Development Block Grant Program, the Home Investment Partnerships Program, and the Emergency Solutions Grant Program. Let's 
talk about each of those three programs, uh, if we can. You mentioned the Block Grant Program. Sabina, so, you know, what is that? The Community Development Block Grant Program is our largest. And it is, um, primary function is to create viable urban communities by way of affordable, decent housing through uh, suitable living environments and by expanding economic opportunities, principally for people who are low and moderate income. It is a federally funded entitlement program. Do each of the 39 towns in the county participate in this program? No, 37 of the 39 municipalities in Morris County participate by way of an interlocal agreement. Uh, Dover has opted to go on its own, and they participate in the Small Cities Program. Parsippany receives, receives its own entitlement. And when I say entitlement, what that means, it's not competitive, that a jurisdiction receives the funding from the federal government, and it's based on a formula which takes into consideration either housing stock or income. Uh, so, who was actually eligible to apply for the block grant program, and what kinds of projects uh, are eligible? So, municipalities or nonprofits are eligible to apply, and types of activities, they have four categories that um, an applicant could apply for funding. Uh, they are housing, could be affordable housing for people who are special needs or for seniors. There is public uh, infrastructure which would, uh, an example would be the extension of water or sewer lines or sidewalks, streets. There are public facilities, so that would fund projects such as um, firehouses or libraries, community centers, and then there are public services, which would be something like um, child care scholarships or adult care scholarships. And I, I would imagine that each of these, pro that there are certain criteria that these projects need to meet? Yes, the principal criteria is that they need to serve people who are low or moderate income, and they have to be consistent with the priorities that have been identified in our five-year consolidated plan. So, uh, Sabina, who makes the final decision uh, regarding project funding? Well, that is where my colleague Wayne Cresta oh, okay. from Morristown comes in. He is the chair of our Community Development Revenue Sharing Advisory Committee. Okay, thanks, Sabina. The Community Development Revenue Sharing Advisory Committee reviews the application applications and hears presentations by the applicants on two evenings in the month of March every year. The subcommittee members then rank the applications and develop funding recommendations. Then these recommendations go to the regional coordinators, which is the executive subcommittee of the CDRS. These regional coordinators then make their recommendation to the full CDRS advisory committee. After full CDRS <laughs> uh, approval, the whole slate for the three programs is presented to the Board of Chosen Freeholders. Freeholders freeholder approval must be made before we can submit the entire program to HUD. Uh, Sabina, how much money was actually applied for in 2012, uh, and how much did the county actually have to distribute? We received over $3 million in application requests for the three programs. Our award from HUD for Community Development Block Grant was $1.5 million, which was a 23.3% reduction from 2011. W Wayne, how much more difficult did that make your work and the committee's work to have that less money to, uh, to work with. Well, Joe, this reduction made the committee's job very challenging since we were not able to fund that many activities. However, we spread the money as far as humanly possible, targeting high-impact organizations that serve large populations of low and moderate income people. Examples include the Bethel AME Church and Church of the Redeemer in Morristown. They host, several, several, they host several organizations and agencies that serve low-income people. Can you give us uh, uh, some specific examples, maybe, of, of uh, projects that were funded under the Block Grant uh, program? Well, some examples of the CDBG funding include the acquisition of land by Habitat for Humanity in order to construct affordable homes for first-time buyers. Another. Uh, was funding was given to acquire a van to transport clients to jobs and training destinations 
to employment horizons. There were uh, two other programs, Sabina, that you mentioned at the uh, very beginning of the program. One, uh, a home program, mm -hmm. and I believe the other, uh, an emergency solutions grant program. What is the HOME program? HOME stands for Home Investment Partnerships Program, and it is uh, responsible for uh, creating affordable housing for people who are lower moderate income or seniors or people with special needs by way of construction, rehabilitation, or acquisition. Wayne, w what were some of the projects that received funding in 2012 under this, uh, the HOME program? Well, the HOME program was cut almost 40 percent, so I had very little money to distribute. The total award from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development was a little more than $617,000. Again, the review committee tried to spread the little amount of money a long way. Examples of projects that got funded include construction of affordable units for home buyers in Madison, construction of a respite group home for people with special needs by Morris Ark in Hanover, and a tenant-based rental assistance program, which is run in collaboration with the county's housing authority. Sabina, the Emergency Solutions Program, what is that? That is a program that deals exclusively with serving homeless people. Um, it has gone through significant changes in this past year, shifting its emphasis from funding shelters to funding providers who provide, um, they want to move people who are homeless directly into permanent housing. Okay. Uh, Wayne, I assume you received requests for projects uh, under this particular program, the Emergency Solutions okay. Program. What were some of the uh, projects that received funding? Well, this is one program that received an increase in allocation for a total of $177,429 to be exact. We funded, we funded homelessness prevention at the county's offices of temporary assistance, case management for the permanent supportive housing program that Family Promise runs, and operating costs at our place in Morristown. Now, we've talked about uh, some of the uh, projects that were funded in 2012. When does this process, Sabina, begin all over again for 2013 projects? Applications will be available in November, and we will be holding an orientation session as well. So then the community development staff is available to assist uh, the applicants in filling out their application and yes. answering any mm -hmm. questions that they may have. Absolutely. Are you anticipating additional cuts in 2013, judging from the previous uh, years? Um, it depends on the sequestration, which is a result of the Budget Control Act of 2011. If that does take effect, then there will be an automatic 9% reduction across all domestic programs, which includes these three programs we've been talking about. So there is that, in addition to any other cuts that Congress might enact. Yeah, so then that would make Wayne's committee's job uh, <laughs> even, even more difficult, difficult yeah, than yes. it was this year. <laughs> well, folks, I want to thank you very much for being with us, and I also want to give uh, some information to our viewers, anyone interested in learning more about the uh, Morris County Division of Community Development and some of the programs and projects that uh, it administers. You can find out more information by contacting the division, which, as we said earlier, is in the Morris County Department of Planning and Development. 973-285-6060 is the phone number. Uh, you may also find them on uh, the web, and that address is morrisplanning.org slash divisions slash community and that will take you right to the community development divisions website folks again thank you very much well, for being with you. us today thank you. now if you have a question about morris county government that you would like to have answered you can call the morris county freeholders office at 973-285-6010 you may also visit the county government's website at morriscountynj.gov and once you're there, please sign up for the county's electronic newsletter, that is Morris Connections, and also take advantage of the many social media that the Morris County government offers. I'm Joe Garifo. Thank you very much for being with us. Tune in again next week at this time for another edition of Focus on Morris County.